Hello and welcome back to the workshop. Now I've got a bit of bigger projects that I'm working on right now so we might get a few short ones in in the time being while I work on those ones. So today I'm going to talk about some of the methods I used for sharpening and if you are a woodworker you know that keeping your stuff sharp is very important and most people overlook that step of it. Now you see in front of me I've got various things. I have many more things that I sharpen than just this, but we'll go over some of the basics. I've got a little bit of everything here. So we're going to go ahead and go through a few different ways that I use to sharpen. Now, as you can see before me, I've got some various different things to help sharpen. So we're going to go over some of the different things that I sharpen, starting with just your basic knives. I always carry a pocket knife with me. Uh, I have many, so I alternate between them. So I like to keep them sharp for any use that I'm using. There are two ways that I sharpen knives. Um, one is with your regular whetstone. It is my preference when sharpening. The other is with a honing steel. And one thing you have to remember about this, it is a honing steel, it is not a sharpening steel. To sharpen, you have to go through the long process of actually sharpening it. This is just meant to maintain your edge. So when it comes to your honing steel, you're basically taking the bevel of your knife, which in this case is probably about 20 degrees on this one. This one was recently sharpened, so it really only needs to be honed. Um, you're creating a wire edge right on the end here. Um, the method that I use basically for honing is whatever amount I start with on the honing steel, I do one less on each side until I get down to one. So you'll basically end up standing it on end. You'll start on whichever side you want to and basically just get to your angle and just one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, one. It's a very quick process and it makes for a pretty nice edge if it's already been sharpened. Now, if the edge is a little duller, which this one isn't too bad right now, but it takes a little bit more practice. You do basically the same thing on the whetstone. You'll get it wet first and you'll run across to try and reestablish that edge and then you'll switch to the honing steel and do the same thing when you're trying to maintain it later. Most of my other tools, I end up using primarily various whetstones. This is a very fine stone, but I have many that are many different courses. I would start with a very coarse stone and move to a very high coarse stone. Um, I like to put a towel underneath here to keep it from slipping. So we'll look at just a straight chisel and I've got two different kinds here. I've got my very large one and I've got a very thin one. Basically when I do chisels and it's the same process with the hand planes, you have to be very good at keeping the angle the same as you're doing it. I always like to start by flattening the edge, which I will do right across the stone here. Just make sure it's flat, put a couple fingers on here to add a little pressure just to keep it straight on the on there. Otherwise you can use something like this, which is a honing guide. This will hold it in place. And you'll clamp it down and that'll hold it at the bevel and it's got a little wheel here that runs across your stone that helps maintain where that edge is. 
These are generally made for wider chisels, um, hand planes. So the hand plane, mine, I always keep around 25 degrees. So I will establish where that flat point is, clamp it right down in this, and use that as a guide. Over the years, I've gotten far more comfortable with it. So you can get very good at holding where that angle is as you're sharpening. The last one is a little tricky, and I will admit I am not the greatest at it. I get a good enough edge for me to work with, but I still need quite a bit more practice, but is your gouges. It's a curved surface, which makes it a little more tricky to sharpen. Basically, when I do these, I will roll it along that angle, and there's no really good guide that I've come across to do this. But you can roll it across the angle to get that angle on your gouge. And then you can clean it up with a leather strop. Uh, you can use a broom handle, a dowel, and then just wrap a piece of leather around it and use a gritting compound. The polishing compound will take off the burr. And then finishing off, all you really have to do is do a little work with your gouge, and that helps take off the burr in the back side here. The other method I've used, which I've had some success with, is using these hand diamond honing. There's three different grits in most of the sets you can get. It's basically maintaining that angle and doing the same thing, going across that curve and keeping that angle. The thing that I had forgotten to mention with doing chisels and planes is you can set yourself up a jig to get the perfect angle every time. So I know that the distance from the end of this block to these blocks is going to be these degrees every time. Now I've got a 25 and a 30 for different applications. Primarily I always use the 25. So basically all I'll have to do is get it right up against that block and then put my honing guide right on here and make sure that it is completely square, lock it in place, and then I've got 25 degrees no matter what I'm polishing it or sharpening it on. Now with these honing guides too, it still allows you to get flat edge because you can see that it's about the same thickness as the plane so you can still knock your burrs off from the other end. The other option that you have for sharpening is diamond stones. This one is a compound one. It has four different grits on it so basically you just take it out of its holster and flip it to the next grit. So once you've worked on the one side, you can flip it and get finer and finer as you go on. Um, the two compounds that I use when I'm sharpening is I will use, obviously water is one of your best options. It's cheap, easy to come by, and all you have to do is fill a bowl and continually wet your stone. The other compound you can use, which helps in the polishing process, is a window cleaner of sorts. Uh, Windex is fine. I've used that plenty of times in the past. Primarily I just use water. I feel it's more than enough for what I'm doing. Um, I will use window cleaner if I'm on a high polished stone, like this one, just to get a nice shine on the end of my bevel. But other than that, those are the methods that I primarily use when I'm sharpening. And if you are a woodworker and you like to use hand tools primarily like I do, sharpening is going to be a big part of what you're doing. So getting good at sharpening is also very important. They always say that a dull knife will hurt you more than a sharp knife will. If you have to force it at all, it is more dangerous to you. You want that cutting edge to be very easy to cut through what you're working on. 
I hope that you found this helpful. A big part of having tools is maintaining them. And if you can't keep your tools nice and sharp, it's going to make you struggle along the way and it's going to hurt you in the long run when you are learning how to do woodworking. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, leave a comment, like this video, and please subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye.